How's it going viewers of the internet and welcome back to once again another exciting episode on Needle Media. So as you guys can tell from the title, the thumbnail, everything about this video so far, you guys already know that I'm going to be going over how to film BMX related stuff. More specifically in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys the gear and what you guys need to do to get clips for a BMX edit or Instagram clips. In the near future, please stay tuned for another video that's going to teach you guys some tips, some techniques into editing real BMX videos. So to everybody wondering what my certain level of expertise is when it comes to filming BMX videos and editing BMX videos, quite frankly because there is no BMX edit that I've made on the internet because of copyright issues. But I can assure you guys that I have filmed a numerous amount of BMX edits and not only that, I also include some spliced up artsy montage in almost every single vlog. So without further ado, to prove my point, here is some work that I have done in the past. Love you, I love you, I love you. Where you go, I follow. Rio, cocaine, good love, Creo. T scrap moving for the D lo we know. I ain't never ran from nothing but the police. What a Now whether that you be rich or poor, you can either get some crazy expensive $2,000 fisheye if you want to get that serious, or you can go out and buy a death lens for your iPhone. It really doesn't matter, as long as you have a fisheye, that is the starter to get into where you're going. The fisheye I use that I think is very beneficial to what I do is called the Apteca 6.5mm lens. It's probably one of the best lens on the market for a very cheap price. It's around $150 on Amazon and I mean... You get what you pay for. It's not the best, but it, it does its job. It does its job quite nice. So to go alongside with a fisheye, what you really want to do is invest in some sort of camera caddy or stabilizer. In this case, I'm using an Apteca X-Grip Pro Metal Edition. I think it's called something like that. But you can also get just a simple camera caddy that is some plastic Apteca X-Grip. It doesn't have to be expensive. It all does the same job. It's just the quality that you're getting. And the reason why we are using this is just because you can get down low and you can really get underneath the person that you're filming, which is very, very crucial when you're filming BMX videos. Next on the list, you guys want to have a camera that's decent at filming. I'm not saying to go out and spend like $3,000 onto some crazy Sony camera or something like that. I'm saying just find what's good for you and roll with it basically. And to be brutally honest with you guys, the very first camera that I started using on my channel was a simple point shoot for like $100 from Walmart or Target. And let me tell you what, I used that thing like it was a very expensive professional camera. Next camera on the list that I got was the Canon T4i. And long story short, this camera exposed me and helped me learn so much about filming with this just flip out screen. To the point where the camera I'm filming on right now is a Canon 5D Mark III, which is a very expensive camera. I think it's $2,500 and it does not have a flip out screen. But just because I learned so much about this, I'm very comfortable about using this camera without even looking at myself in like a screen right there. So find what's good for you and just roll with it because sooner or later you'll become a freaking G. So next on the list is obviously finding some sort of zoom lens. Zoom lens is very important when you're filming BMX stuff. Not only will it help you in the long run of filming lines because you don't have to run around with a fisheye and you'll just see duh, 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 with the fisheye trying to run around and stabilize the camera. It will help you so much because you just sit in one place and just film somebody. And that's not even the best part. When you're filming BMX related content with a zoom lens, you can get as artsy as you want, any angle you desire. It's kind of like, it's kind of like playing a video game. You can do anything you want. You can make it as artsy as you want and you can, you could do anything. A long time ago when I was a freshman in high school, there was a videography project that we had in our media class. And one of the things that the teacher told us to do was not to worry about getting a tripod. Cause you know, not a lot of kids in the class could afford a tripod. What she told us to do, if we had a zoom lens, was to squeeze our elbows together and hold our breaths when we're filming. 
Now this may seem very good, but if you're shooting something along the lines of like 100 millimeters and more, no matter what human movement you get, you'll see some sort of a shake in it from your hands. It's just, it's the natural thing that humans do, they shake. So one thing that I definitely recommend is to find some sort of monopod. So being the fact that I am an absolute camera gear junkie, I have like a $300 monopod. I would not tell you guys in the world ever to go buy one of those unless you are getting very serious with it. You can go out and buy a monopod for 20 bucks and it helps so much in the long run if you're filming any sorts of BMX related content or any content whatsoever with a zoom lens. Now there's also some tripods that you can use alongside with this. If you guys have a, if you guys are using your phone, point and shoot, anything like that, go pick up a Targus Joby tripod type thing. I literally picked this up from Target for 20 bucks. And this was the main thing I used my DSLR with for like the longest time. But my DSLR would never hold on this thing unless I set it up like a certain way, like some crazy like Spider-Man looking thing. Now sooner or later you would want to upgrade if you're getting serious with it and that's why I got the Joby Metal X grip thing Majini. I don't even know what it's called at this point. Anyways, I got the metal Joby one and it's, it's all right, does its job. One of the last pieces of camera gear in this camera gear portion of this video right now is the GoPro. Now I'm sure almost everybody has seen the classic GoPro videos as far as John Hicks bombing a hill, as far as Austin Augie cruising the streets of New York City, as far as Billy Perry going to Woodward, everybody has seen it and I am 400% sure of that. So like I said earlier, one technique that a lot of people use with a fisheye lens is that they will get as low as they can and upwards. So you see almost every aspect of the bike and what the rider is doing. Now because most fisheyes are fixed, they only have a certain focal length. And because you were filming something up close, it'll probably have a focal length of around three feet, two feet. So you always want to stay somewhat very close to the person that you're filming, because if you're like 30 feet away, you won't be able to see them at all. Another technique you can use when you're filming some sort of BMX edit is that when you are following the person doing the trick, and let's say if they're hitting a ledge or a ramp, you can stop at the coping of the ledge or ramp and you could still have them in frame doing the trick. I know you guys have seen this with a lot of BMX edits when they follow a long line, but they leave it off at the very last ledge they do and just have the corner of the ledge in frame when the person's still doing the trick. The hardest part about filming some sort of BMX video is getting a long lens and tripod to be able to capture a long sort of line. Now, why is this hard, you may be asking. If you are the most consistent rider in the world, you're able to land everything first try. In most cases, a lot of people don't land everything first try. So you'll be sitting there filming somebody for a long time with a manual line or you know some sort of line in general. The next key technique that you guys really wanna get comfortable with is shooting on manual if you have a DSLR. And I'm not just talking the manual camera settings themselves, I'm talking about manual focus, manual aperture, and manual everything. If you are shooting with some sort of long lens, the reason why you wanna keep it on manual focus is that if you have it on autofocus, it will try to focus in on like the trees in the background, the sunset in the background the hot lady down the street in the background instead of the rider itself because he's going so fast to the point where the camera will only see what's in frame, basically. If you guys were to take out your phones right now, and if you guys were to go outside, let's say, into a shadow, and then you were to take it out of the shadow into the sunlight, nine times out of 10, it will take sort of a quick two second adjustment to get where it's at. The same thing with the camera. I can't tell you guys how many BMX edits I've seen of kids who are trying to get sponsored and they're filming their cameras on completely auto aperture and completely auto everything else and they will be filming a line under some trees and then they'll get out of the trees and hit some like four set and you can't even tell what they're doing in the four set. Next on the list is head chopping. So if you guys are new to the filming industry, you guys don't know what that means. It's not some guillotine cutting off heads. It means when you're shooting some sort of a camera angle and you completely miss their head the entire time. So all you see is the person's body neck down. But if you film somebody and you completely just get their bike and spokes the whole time, I would not recommend to even show the person the clip that you filmed afterwards. I would just delete it right away because nobody likes a very clear and vivid head chop. Next on the list is having some sort of good audio. I know a lot of people can't afford it, but the last thing you wanna do is to be listening to the classic, the classic BMX edit song and just sitting here listening and hearing.
So one of the very last and final things that you guys always want to make sure of when you are filming is having a somewhat sort of high frame rate if you are filming anticipated slow-mo clips. So let's say somebody's doing a double bar spin. You don't want to film in 30 frames per second if you plan on slow-moing it in the future. Set it down to 60 frames or up to 60 frames per second if you really want to. Or pull out your little smart device right here and set your thing to 240 frames per second. Although you can tell it's filmed by an iPhone, you will get some super, super, super sick slow-mo clips. So with that being said, that's going to top off this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys found some sort of information relevant and useful to you. If you guys want to support me whatsoever, support this channel, pick up a Needle Media dad hat. I just sold out of the cream ones today and I think there's only a few more left. So please act fast, act as fast as you can. So thank you guys so very much for watching this video. If you guys have liked this video whatsoever, if you guys enjoyed it, please drop a big thumbs up. And as always, Share with your friends, share with the homie, share with the dog, share with the cat, share with the friends, how mom, share with their Uncle Bethany. Uncle Bethany needs to know that we are out here learning how to film videos for YouTube. So stay keen for a video in the future of how to edit these BMX videos. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Peace. I go